Columbus, Ohio. I'm headed your way Friday, April 12th and Saturday, April 13th. Toledo, Ohio. The Live and Alive tour is headed your way. I'll be there Friday, April 26th and Saturday, April 27th. Los Angeles. Sunday, May 12th, I'll be at the Bourbon Room for my show during the Netflix is a Joke Fest. Miami, Florida, I'm bringing the Live and Alive tour your way. I'll be at the Miami Improv Friday, June 7th, and Saturday, June 8th. Get your tickets now. All tickets are available at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, and Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And I'm starting this episode like I start them all by saying thank you. Whether you're new here or whether you've been here, thank you very much for all your support. I love my job. I love being able to do this with you guys. Uh, and look, if you got to have more, then you got to check out the Patreon. It's called the Honeydew with y'all. And it's this show with y'all. And y'all have the craziest stories I've ever heard in my life. If you don't believe me, check out the actual free Honeydew episodes we do on this channel where we highlight some of those best episodes and tell me I'm wrong. It's five bucks a month. It's been five bucks a month since we started. And that's what it is. It's staying right there. All right. And The Way Back. Thank you for your support of the new podcast, The Way Back. It's such a fun show for me. I feel like it goes back a little bit to my roots in podcasting and, I don't know, just sitting around with, like, cousins and friends and stuff, shooting it up and having a good time. So check that out um, and come see me on tour. If I'm in your town when you are around, all tickets are available at ryansickler.com. All right, that's the biz. You know what we do over here. We highlight the low lights, and I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers and i'm very excited to have this guest back on the honeydew ladies and gentlemen please welcome back in finance welcome Woo! back to the honeydew yeah thank you for having me man and thank you to everyone out there that dug me the last time i did the honeydew man i'm telling you but I, I was in San Diego this weekend. Multiple people. I loved you on the Honeydew. It, it's hell yeah. you know, it, it was really really cool, and, and I'm so glad that that could resonate with people, and they dug it, and they got something out of it. And thank you for having this uh, this 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 thing that we can get out. Uh, thank you. I love hearing that. Thank yeah, you for sharing that. For sure. I, yeah, I mean it's, it. I say it all the time. It's like if your kids go spend the night at somebody's house and they come back, your kids are great kids, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, the well yeah. man. I love hearing that my fans yeah. are great fans. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they roll hard, too. Yeah, I like cool. that they come up to tell you that. So you had yeah, a really good too. response, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm also excited because last time I saw you, I'm fresh out of the hospital. I'm on a cane. You come up with a cane. Mm -hmm. We're on canes. Today, I'm out there standing on my own, too. You pull up parallel park. Uh -huh. Out yep. on your own, too. I don't use a camera. <laughs> hand behind the passenger. Let's let's. And go <laughs> whipping it in that's right um, well i'm so glad you're here before we get into whatever we're going to talk about please plug uh everything you'd like awesome uh ian finance wild happy and free my stand-up special debut special you can get it at youtube.com slash b and e and pod it's on my podcast youtube and uh you you're gonna love it i'm telling you i'm so proud of this i'm so happy and uh, it's a really cool thing, and uh, people are digging it. <laughs> Good for you, dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. Good for you. <laughs> and uh, um, I am yes. six nine. There you go on Instagram, ianfidance.com for all my tour dates, and of course my podcast, B and Ian with Jordan, out every Wednesday on uh, YouTube. All right. Yeah, man. All right. So we were talking earlier outside. Last time we talked about death. We talked about addiction. Mm -hmm. um, and death, what, destruction, and rising from the ashes. Yeah, and you growing up, you coming up in the punk uh, era. Oh, did and we talk that. about that? Did we? I don't know. Oh, we well, maybe that was outside. It. Yeah. Either way, um, you're definitely one of the guys that's that's put himself out there in a uh -huh. way that I admire, I, I you know, I'm just like, look at Ian Fi I, I said to you, I just saw somebody spit in your butthole on your ah. podcast. I saw Stevie Weeby do that. <laughs> yes. And I was like, this guy is, fuck he's who he is. Uh -huh. So I asked you also, because I know that you, um, I said, are you polyamorous? And you're like, no. And I, I'm not, I don't even know what the hell all of it is. So uh -huh. 
I want to talk about your sexuality. Sure. And what it's like being a man in today's society who uh -huh. enjoys a bit of everything. Yes. And and how that also is probably not as easy as I just made that sound. No. <laughs> It's been quite a journey, for better or worse. And uh, I always love when people go, hey, I love how you put yourself out there, man. I, uh, hey, man, seeing a guy like you makes me feel better about me. And I'm like, thanks. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. You know? Yeah. Hey, man, I appreciate what an absolute fucking freak you are. Because I could never do I that. I could never, You bro. shameless you. sexual Swiss Army knife. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you are. A what can I say? Suicide. I'm like a. I I love I love it all. You know. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's right? go to the beginning. When do you know that you, I like men and women? Oh, no, no, no. I got hit in the head when I was watching an episode <laughs> of American Gladiators. And I've American never been the same since. <laughs> Dude, legit, I'm not lying. I used to go to the video store and the women's workout section was next to the WWF videos. And I would just look at both. <laughs> What's it? Which one do I choose? <laughs> you know? So as a kid growing yes. up, like your first, not even necessarily your first sexual experience at all, but when you first realized you like girls or boys or mm -hmm. both, was it the same time where you're like, no, I like both of these or were girls first, boys later, opposite? Bro, I don't even know. I, I just, <laughs> I just know my, my parents, well, my dad's dead. So my mom <laughs> tells a story <laughs> uh, that I got kicked off the swim team as a kid because I was getting erections. At and, how old? Like four. <laughs> You get and, four -year -old yeah, and they took me to a doctor to be like, is there something wrong with him? And they were like, no, he just he was like a horny child, I guess. I don't know. And it's like, dude, I told that to someone. They're like, that's so deeply traumatizing. And I'm like, is it? They're is like, it? But Nick gets hard in the water. Yeah. What, do you, what do you, what do you, in don't the water, swim, outside the water, <laughs> when you're walking around? You know, I used to walk up to women on the beach and just like stare at them. I've, I think I just like I, that I don't kid. Know. You were that kid. Yeah. I mean, I was always like curious, you know, like I would always, you know, and like I, I remember I would like like I didn't have the vocabulary to say that I liked someone, but I know I had a crush on my babysitter. So I remember like telling my grandparents we were watching Wheel of Fortune and I was like, I really want Vanna White to be my babysitter. <laughs> that was like my way of saying that. But it was never like. I really want, you know, like Daryl Strawberry to be my babysitter. It was like <laughs> never that, Strawberry. you know. Yeah. It was never yeah. like, you know, <laughs> the fall guy to yeah, be my yeah. babysitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was always like, Luke yeah, Duke. it was always a woman, you know. But then, like, I, I don't know. I, I just like. Uh, so wait, what's your first sexual? And I include a kiss. What's your first sexual experience in life? Oh man, there was. And include a kiss. There was a there was a girl I liked in first grade, and this explains a lot because she, I said she looked like one of my favorite baseball players. There's Daryl Strong, named Mickey Morandini, who was the second baseman for the Phillies. So my parents would call her Minnie Morandini because I was like, she looks <laughs> yeah. like Mick. And and God bless my parents, they didn't judge that I was like, I like this girl. She reminds me of a man, <laughs> you know. They were like, yeah, it's Minnie Morandini. But they did do a thing where when I would cry, they'd say I was acting like a girl, and they'd call me Ianetta. So maybe that played into a little couple things, you know. And also at Halloween, my dad would dress as a woman and my mom would dress as a man. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. But it was fun. Yeah, once <laughs> a know? year. Yeah. We celebrated Halloween a lot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was like never judgments in my house. You know what I mean? And um, uh, I, I just remember I liked this girl and she came over and she dude i still have like memories of this sitting at a little fisher price plastic like picnic table and she leaned over and kissed me and i go oh wow i really like that if you want to do that again you don't even have to ask and she did again and i fell out of my chair and my mom had to leave the house because she was laughing so hard <laughs> you know oh she saw it so yeah yeah yeah, yeah she was like dying laughing you know <laughs> But um, so now you're being humiliated too uh, on top yeah. of it. Yeah, but physical, physical. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, look, this happens a lot 
with with boys and girls they fool around together you know and a lot of people deny it or they try to make it go away and then i think that's where like a lot of uh toxic masculinity comes from sure. where guys get mad at women and everything if they get rejected because they have these things they've done when they were younger and they think it defines them and so they have to prove that they're not that and if they don't get the proof that they're not that they get angry you know um and there was uh I don't know. It was like kids in grade school, we would fool around. And uh, there was, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, going underneath the bathroom stall and like fooling around. And then it was like a secret. And then this kid touched my dick in front of everyone. And I. What do you mean in front of everyone? Like on the playground. He like, like took our little, he took our little bathroom secret and took it outside. And so I followed him down and I beat him up. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you don't do that unless we're in the privacy of our own bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want you to make me do this, you know? But like, dude, I, I'm I'm telling you, man. So I've I've been in the like, my daughter's dude. in third grade. I've oh, heard that I just want to leave and go get her house. Yeah, go. yeah. Again, oh. you're like I'm like the fucking. Und where are you getting away with this though? For real? Where do you you go into a bathroom with other students? I guess, yeah. yeah. And it was never or like got a, caught. Or like a sleepover. This kid. That I makes mean, more in, sense in, to me. A sleepover. In hindsight, sure. a part of me is like, was I molested? Because there was this kid that was like, this is fucked up. He was like, I like it when my brother bites my penis. Can you do that? And I was like, like it's like broccoli. <laughs> like what do you mean? All right. So I just remember like <laughs> we were going to a Fuck baseball up. card signing and I'm just in the living room like hang hang hang. You're going yeah. to see Mickey before <laughs> the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the, you know, pre-gaming for Mickey. And you're chawing on <laughs> and his I'm just chawing on this kid's cock <laughs> like it's a fucking red man fucking chewing tobacco. I'm like, do I spit? What what the hell's happening? And then and then I, I'm like, wait, what do you mean your brother? <laughs> What? <laughs> What's that the fuck? How'd you figure out you liked, you know, big Tony chomping down on your wiener? And then and then I'm like, and he's like, my turn. And I was like, no, I don't want your turn. You know? Oh man. Yeah. Is that the first time you had done anything with a, bo a boy? I mean, that memory sticks out a Ooh. lot, Ryan. <laughs> I certainly hope there aren't any other memories I have buried deep down. <laughs> It could have been a simple kiss you know. of a boy before you started well, chomping on. Well, I remember I would ask my parents, like, can I, can I would be like, can I kiss my friend? And they'd be like, well, you need to ask them. And they'd be like, okay, yeah. And it was just like, Mwah. Okay. Like, I liked, I, I was always, I don't know, I think I just loved love. I was always, like, hugging on friends and family and, like, my pets. I don't know. I, like, always love, um, you know, like, being around people. and Physical uh, touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I always love just, you know, doing whatever my friend's brothers would have them do to them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so weird. I like it when my brother, and it's like, dude, in it's hindsight, such it's like a layered <laughs> sentence. Hey, hey man. I like it hey when man. my brother. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? Why the fuck are you telling me this? We're watching Encino, man. You know, like, what the hell's going on? You know? <laughs> What are the things you don't like that your brother does? And let's take a step back. Do you like it or do you have no choice? Yeah. This is. But, dude, so many boys fool around with boys. So many girls fool around with girls. And they don't talk about it, whatever, whatever. And I know this because when I was in fifth grade, I used to go to the public library and look at psychology textbooks to see if I was normal or not. Nah, did you? I swear to God. What was making you think you weren't normal? Chomping down on a friend's <laughs> cock. What's Ryan, <laughs> what do you think? We're all doing that at sleepovers? I mean, I knew from an early age it wasn't the, <laughs> the, the, the most normal hangout activity, Ryan. You know? I'm fucking nibbling on a wiener like a ballpark <laughs> Frank, Ryan. Granted. <laughs> But if you liked it and you liked boys. I didn't like oh, it. Oh, you didn't like it. I don't think I liked it. Okay. It wasn't a thing I was actively seeking out. Like, okay. So now you're other, going to look and where's see. Where's some other Lunchables I can snack you, on? Because <laughs> you're not telling anyone? No, it wasn't really a thing I was too no. vocal about. Yeah. Not <laughs> you know? parents, not mom, not sharing it with anybody. No. 
Okay. But, but the fucked up thing was around this time my dad died. So, and everyone in my life is Catholic and they're telling me he's with you forever. He's with you. Now he's with you forever. And I'm like, well, this is a fucking death sentence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Jesus Christ. So you so go then look all my at little the liaisons, they'd want to fool around and be like, get away from me. Father's watching. <laughs> is know? that really how you would go? You would guilt? always pull me back. <laughs> Just when I think I'm out, they pull me right back in. You know? So what happens then? You look up these books. You're looking to see if you're normal. What do you yeah, find? Yeah. What do well, you, you find? You can't tell anyone. Yeah. You know? Well, Jesus you could. Christ. You could. What? Who you are don't you tell? Let me ask you this. You don't think any of the boys or girls that you guys were touching or whatever mm -hmm. is telling anyone else in their worlds? You think everyone kept no, that No, because if they do, secret? I already proved I'm going to beat you up if you <laughs> tell anyone. Are you kidding me? You're sending messages. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't just to him. That was a that was a message on the yard. <laughs> you kidding me? Yeah. He sacrificed. Oh that yeah, kid. I got yard hard that day. <laughs> Fucking let's go. Yard <laughs> hard. Yeah. Shout out CMI. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you're you're not really telling anyone. All right, you're keeping it inside, and then you know your your mom's side of the family's wildly homophobic, so you like you know internalize that. Now, do you ever have a cousin or anyone like that that is you guys share anything with? Where you is there anyone no. you can confide? Nobody. No, no. So you're holding this in. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, and on top of that, your dad's watching, so you think this guy's hating you. Yeah. You know, when when years later I realized, you know, he wasn't. <laughs> you know, but it took me a while. Yeah. But, uh, and it's funny, man. I've been like um, into trans women my whole life, and I don't know where it came from. I don't know what happened. I'm going to tell you where the fucking but, came from, bro. When you were looking at the fucking VHS. VHS, oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, oh, what, it's not Dusty what if Rose, I create bro. the greatest combination of all time? That's right. How do I put Hulk Hogan on Su Suzanne Summers' body? <laughs> That's see. exactly where yeah. that came from. Um, I believe it. Dude, I swear to God. I like th this, this kid that he and I would like fool around. In, in class one day, I like drew a picture of a woman with boobs and a penis and I folded it up and I slid it on his desk and I was like, what do you think of this I just invented? Hmm? You think of that? What do you think? What's your you take? That? Huh? He was like, this is a bit much for me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. And you, you, I mean, look, that's obviously a thing. You're fucking bang, bang, bang on these fucking VHS videos. But all right, let's go to the next. And who do you, who do you lose your virginity to? Girlfriend, friend. Girl. Wh which virginity? Pee pee or mouth? <laughs> that's a great question. Why don't you mouth. start with pee pee <laughs> first? We'll go pee pee. Pee pee first. was a lot longer. Was it? Mouth, we, we got it in young. Yeah. You know? There was a there was a guy I had a thing with for like eleven years. He was my age. It was eleven like, years. It wasn't like I a, hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Coach. <laughs> oh God, Coach. God. I never had the makings of a varsity athlete, but he sure put me in there. Coach. <laughs> what um, what who's this kid? Dude, I mean, was, without saying, it was you know, was suburban like, Brokeback Mountain. We would get in fist fights in public, and then in private, we would be like. You know, we had we had secret screen names that we would sign on to at night just in case there was any way for anyone to like find your out. friends rolled in and yeah, saw yeah, yeah, over yeah, your yeah, shoulder yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah. Do you remember your screen name? Uh, my screen name was so what 44. What was his? I forget. But no, I don't. But I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, so what there was a Metallica song called So What by that. It was a cover of the Anti Nowhere League. And like four was my number, but ever I I knew it was a metal. My first screen name was Metal Load because I loved metal, and Load had just come out, but it just sounds like Robot Comp. And so I made this screen name, and so I thought it was like, yeah, this song, so what? But everybody viewed it as like, so what? <laughs> Which is very apropos for what you're you know going my for. behavior. Um, gay. And, uh, I, uh, yeah, this, this kid and I had like a thing and, and, uh, we finally consummated the thing on like a school trip and, uh, dude, I'll never forget, man. We like fooled around and then we went on the bus to like go to, I guess like the next, like 
what I think we were all going out to like a dinner or something. And uh, by the time he went to the back of the bus and I was sitting on the front. And by the time we got to our destination, all these kids started coming up to me and they were like, oh, so-and-so says you're gay. You're gay. You're a fat this and that. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm spending the rest of this trip fighting. <laughs> and so <laughs> I started like fighting kids and like I got in trouble and they couldn't send me home. So I got like, you know, I had to be chaperoned by a teacher because I was like fighting these kids because they were all calling me gay. And like, dude, the feeling of like betrayal and fear of me and this this kid, you know, having a mouth party and then him going in. <laughs> I don't know what he told them. I don't know if he was trying to get out ahead of it, you know, like, a, like a gay little Dexter, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, news. he's he's yeah. killing people, but he's like helping solve the crime, you know, it's this gay Dexter in the back of the bus. And uh, he wanted to get out ahead of all the rumors, I guess. And he threw me under the, I don't know what he said, but man, oh man, I like lost all my friends that trip. And I just hung out with these like three other like, nerds and uh we had so much fun it was great we we had a great time whatever but then you know um at the end of the trip we we you know i guess you could say we made up <laughs> and uh that carried on in secret for like 11 years and it would be like once or twice time. a year but dude we never like talked in put we like outwardly were mean to each other in public and we never kissed and it was like such a fucked up thing to like go through of like, you know, not because like kissing's gay. Like, dude, I'm not fucking gay. Now put your teen boy mouth on my teen boy penis like two straight friends, you know? Like two straight <laughs> friends. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And uh, we're not yeah. kissing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like a mind fuck, dude. Yeah. And that math and makes when, sense, dude, though. I get we, it. We lived like down the street, but we went to separate schools. And so, in order to have our rendezvous, rende rendezvous, mm -hmm. we would have um, we'd make up these lies that our printer broke, and that we'd have to go to each other's house to use each other's printer. <laughs> and where are you printing at his place? Where do you go when you? Well, print? he had a com he had a computer room that oh. magically his parents weren't home, but you know. I had used the printer and then my printer was in my bedroom. And uh, I mean, it's at one point my mom was like, well, I keep getting the printer fixed. What is happening? I'm just in my room with a hammer. Like, mom, the printer's broken again. <laughs> you know? What do you know? I got to get that old printer dick. Come on <laughs> over. <laughs> printer dick. Boy, that shit was expensive too back then. Oh, yeah. to we were on a first name basis for Comp on. USA. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. We had a fucking gold membership card. They're finally Circuit like, ma'am, you might want to check your son's bedroom. <laughs> yeah, ma'am, we think your son's oh, oh, God, we think yeah. your son's gay. <laughs> the cop USA is calling you out. Listen, man, we yeah, we yeah, we yeah, think your son yeah. might be gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we keep this. Do you see what <laughs> I see? Did you ever almost get caught, um, or ever actually get caught? teachers no. parents nobody no you're in school doing this you're going to people's houses doing this no. you never have but then once call. we could drive we would like drive to like desolate areas and just blow each other in the car <laughs> and then not talk on the way back <laughs> just <laughs> You know what it's like to have another man's cum in your mouth and to not talk about it? And I'm talking, we're driving far away, so no one sees us. I'm talking like a half hour drive back in dead silence, not even looking at each other. Like, maybe if we're quiet, it makes it go away, you know? <laughs> I mean, we not, the only thing we had in common is we like putting each other's cocks in each other's skulls. That's it. We, we didn't play sports together. We played, you know? It was nothing. No commonality except a salacious lust for each other's delicious flesh. Oh, that is wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just making me wonder about how many kids in my neighborhood now. Because we had a gang Bro. of kids in our neighborhood. Now well, makes dude, me wonder. My stepdad. The most aggressive ones. I'm like, now I wonder if. Huh, Joe, dude, my, my ex stepdad fucking worked oh, at a man. prison and, uh, he like, when I was like 15 or 16, he told some story about like this, this kid, this kid came in and, uh, 
you know, he was, uh, he like shoved a hammer up his ass or whatever. And we had to, we had to get it out. And, and then it turns out, you know, he was, he, uh, set his house on fire cause he was, he was upset cause him and his friend were blowing each other when they were 14 and they got caught. He's like, can you believe that? These kids were blowing each other at 14. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy, man. What do you know that I don't, is this a secret signal you're sending me right now, Jim? What the fuck are you talking about? What if it's a fake story? So then I like, gotta yeah. go over the top and be like, oh, yeah. I'm like the dad in American beauty. I'm like, yeah, these f- make me sick. <laughs> I'm disgusted by it, you know? Meanwhile, I'm just in bed, like, longing for the time that we go on our secret screen names to talk again. Oh, you know? Whether you hydrate to live or live to hydrate, Liquid IV quenches your thirst faster than water alone. With three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, all in a single stick. We're flying out to Columbus this weekend for the Live and Alive Tour. Get your tickets now at ryansickler.com. And you already know we're going to be bringing our liquid IVs. We keep them here at the studio. All the guests take them. They love them. They Liquid IV has been rocking with us for years. If you haven't tried them, I'm telling you, you're missing out. One stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. It's got three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink. No artificial sweeteners, non-GMO, and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Plus, they now have three delicious sugar-free flavors. You got white peach, green grape, and lemon lime. However you hydrate, grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or Get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDEW at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code HONEYDEW at liquidiv.com. The Honeydew is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze what you love in your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you and so you can do more of it. All right. I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it a thousand more times. Therapy isn't just for those who experience major trauma. It can help you learn positive coping skills or how to set boundaries. All right. If you're thinking of even starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Honeydew today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash honeydew ever tried to break a bad habit and felt like you're just honeydewing it all wrong well here's a breath of fresh air fume it's not about giving up it's about switching it up fume takes your habit and simply makes it better healthier and a whole lot more enjoyable fume is an award-winning flavored air device that does just that instead of vapor Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. All right, so they sent me one of these things. All right, so your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial. It's designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting. I'm sitting here doing it myself right now. If you're a fidgeter, this is your thing. Look, you just put your little, you put your little core inside there. Boom, boom. Adjust that airflow. I'm sitting here playing with it. It's got a magnet base. Uh, you got plenty to, to do here. All right. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash honeydew and getting the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use my code honeydew to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Now. Let's get back to the dude. Dude, I I bought a book at like Borders Books and Music that was like a gay erotic novel. Bro, I like wore a costume. Daniel Steel. Oh, that's fucking funny. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel Balls of Steel. And uh, I. You wore a costume. Bro, I wore, I, I, I wore a costume. What kind? I wore, I got got my my grandfather's uh, like hat. He had like a. he had like a bucket hat that he wore. He had a trench coat. I put that <laughs> on. So oh yeah, sus. and dude, I had curly trench hair down to my shoulders. 
I I look like, you know, I'm like a hundred pounds soaking wet. I'm drawing more attention to myself. Way more. Looking yeah. like an emaciated Muppet walking around with a fucking trench coat. And I'm like, one gay book, please. <laughs> You know? One gay and then I, I, I like jerked off to it and then I set it on fire to like make it go away. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was okay. crazy. It was crazy. Let's talk about this for a second. The what? shame. How, how, the, how, how we, how the first episode of the Honeydew is about me drinking my life away. I wonder why, Ryan. I wonder why. I also grew up Catholic. Uh -huh. So I get that. I guess what I'm getting at is how much of it of this make it go away, burn the book, for example, um, do you think was not only Catholic guilt, but also like society and peer pressure? Like, what do you think? Was there a bigger? I mean, it wasn't like. Were you, you know, more worried I, about burning in hell or more worried about getting your ass physically beat up for being I was, gay? I was nah, man. If somebody wants to step to me for being gay, like I'll fucking, you know, you better pack a lunch bell. We're going to be there all day. Okay, brother. Yeah, I'm gonna beat your ass and suck your dick to prove you a lesson. <laughs> um, I'm gonna beat your ass and suck. And and uh, no, I wasn't Nobody's worried about ever that. Said that to me in my life. <laughs> I've been in a lot of fights. Nobody's ever said that shit. Come on, to brother, me. my gay little rings are coming on. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. No, but I wasn't worried about like get my ass kicked. It's like yeah, kick my yeah, ass. You can fucking fight. fuck you. Sure. I was worried about. Honestly, I was worried about people finding out and leaving me and abandoning me. Mm. And um, so I had to be the thing that you would always want around because if you found out who I really was, you would not want me in your life. And then I'd be like alone, you know? So I was afraid of people finding out because of judgments, because I hated myself. So I thought everyone else would for it. And I don't know if I got that from society, more so just Catholicism in a way. And the idea that like, I'm doing all this shit while my dad is like watching and he's like so disappointed and like so upset, which is not true, you know? And I know that because it, like I, I, I've said before, but like I had love all the time. I just didn't have love for myself. And I had to recognize that, you know, and, um, he, when, before my dad died, he, he would write me letters. That's nice. I think I told you this. I, I don't know if I did Tell or not, again, but before he remember. left for work, he would write me letters on legal pad every day before he left for work. And he'd, he'd write it to me. It'd just be like a recap of the day before, like what we were looking forward to do the next day, I love that. Or, you know, and then he'd write a little note to my mom and, uh, so many times, I, and, I, and I've read them, I've stacks of them so many times, I've gone back and read them. And so many times in these letters, it said, um, just be who you are and everything will be okay. Be yourself. When, you're, when, when you are Ian, everything is okay. Be the Ian that we love, just be yourself. And I'm, like over and over, just telling me to be who I am and that I'm loved and I'm accepted. But I didn't read them for like, decades you know so i'm just thinking that i've got this twisted perception of of what reality is you know and um you know also i i had the relatives on my mom's side of the family were like real pieces of shit my my grandparents were were great but you know like my my aunt and uncle and whatever but they were like super homophobic mm -hmm. and um you know like uh, <coughs> like my my uncle would like point shit out to me <clears throat> at uh, the beach. And I remember one time he's like, look over there, isn't that disgusting? Look at them men kissing. And I was like, yeah, that is disgusting. What's happening to You're my body right in your pants. Pants. You know? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like legit, I had an uncle that told me they had gay neighbors and if I go on the lawn, I'll catch it. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and I'm like, did I like sleepwalk on the lawn? Because <laughs> I think I caught it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think yeah, I just like it. shit like that that like really fucked me up. And and they're like despicable people. But my dude, my my uncle, I get it, man. He was in Vietnam at 19. He had to drag his buddies out of fields dead. Like he went through some fucking shit, man. So like. You know, and and even I remember asking him, I was like 11 or 12, and I was like, 
Uncle Danny, how come they don't let gay men in the military? And he's like, because if you're in a foxhole getting shot at, you won't look over and the guy next to you is putting on makeup. And I'm like, I mean, I'm a kid. I'm not even in sixth grade. And I can understand that there's no way in the middle of war you'd be getting shot at and a man next to you in a foxhole is putting on foundation. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. Like my uncle's like, we need backup. And the guy's like, and tell him we need mascara. <laughs> like, what world are you in? Yeah, right. He was like making a little joke or whatever. But you know, like I, I don't know. It it uh it it was um, you know, and and I was just always uh, also like there were some kids that got found, like there was this kid, a rumor came out that he like blew another boy like in the back of a church or whatever, and everyone made fun of him. And I would like oddly take up for him <laughs> you know like like to the point where thank god nobody like picked up does on anybody my, know where he did it oh, do, do you <laughs> <laughs> let's go let's go stake it out <laughs> see we always no, but had... i would take up when kids would like yeah. call him like a f i'd be like no fuck you like mm -hmm. whatever who care you know and they're like that's weird and i'm like well i mean he is gay you know <laughs> ew gross <laughs> you know and i was like really nice to him and then he like left the school because he got like bullied too much for it and so i was so worried about that i know? can honestly say i never bullied anybody for being gay mm -hmm. and i don't remember any of our friends or even classmates anybody in the 80s being mm -hmm. openly out anyway yeah. you could you could have a good guess but but dude here's you know what the i'm thing, saying like, male like, or female there was a good guess even even in like grade school high school like you don't know like i didn't know what i was right I, yeah i'm right. still trying to figure it out so to make any declarative statement of right. i am this i am that sure. it's like i just have such an eye roll for all this shit going on with like kids doing that and it's like yeah dude it's kid shit okay cool you're that great awesome but i mean you'll probably grow out of it you know like if if i had jumped at the one thing of like well i've sucked a dick i'm gay i'm the gay guy now it's like well i still love women i still am attracted to women so like what you know it's like i mean like that's the thing like i guess you would say i'm like bisexual but i i really hate the the terminology of it all i think like it does more to alienate us and bring us together you know like i i at the end of the day i i've i've learned i i've always felt gross being like i'm this because it's like i'm me and i do what i want when i want and one day i'll be into this and one day i'll be into that and i don't want to ever be put down as like something forever you know and i think that's uh, what i that's what i was getting at we never had rumors of this or that mm -hmm. we had the unfortunate rumor there was a kid who supposedly uh put peanut butter on his dick and let his dog lick it off and then he that became rumor, skippy for the rest of his but but that rumor i know it's in every high school everywhere. in every high school but you know what there's a kid in every high school that gets it stuck to him and this kid no yeah. pun intended this kid yeah, did yeah. get it stuck to him and yeah. that was the rumor you know, that was the one that went around. It was never about anybody's sexuality. Right. And nobody even called him gay either. You know right, what I mean? Right. There's like, let your dog lick your dick. You know what well, I mean? Well, there was like a rumor that this girl ate M&Ms out of this football player's ass because he wanted that it. That one didn't go around and, our school. And everybody was like, she's a whore. And I remember being like, she's wait, hungry. Wait, wait, hold on. Why is she a whore? And this guy is like, <laughs> yeah, hey, he's let's a hero. get fingering and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. go to... 7-Eleven and get some M&Ms. I've got an idea. It's like, no, this guy's weird. Who's 16? And I like put an M&M on my ass. And also, can we try that? Are you, is you have an open lady? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Like, um, yeah, it's it's like, a, I don't know. Sex and sexuality is like so weird. I feel like it's people have these rigid ideas and expectations. And what pisses me off is there's like, you know, there's this push to identify a million fucking genders, but then with sex and sexuality, it's like, nope, you're either this, this, or this. And it's like, no, man, like, you can do shit and it doesn't define you. Like, it's okay, you know? And, All right, so let's stop there for a second. Huh? When do you decide or allow yourself to accept that it's okay? When do you... I mean, dude, it took a long time, man. When are we talking? I, I used like, to, when I used to get but, drunk and like act out because okay. it was like the only time I could be okay with it, you know? For yourself. Yeah, yeah. But so you didn't, it didn't stop you from... Oh, I, I now think of the time I did almost get caught. Uh, I was, I was on an adult kickball 
team. So this is like 2014 or whatever, right? And uh, I met some guy and he's like, let's, I met him on like Tinder or whatever. And he's like, let's go, to, let's meet up. And I go, all right, we're, okay, let's go to this like bar over here, right? And he shows up and dude, he is a cartoon character of a gay guy. Like sh leather short shorts, little leather hat, no. chains. I swear to God, on a Tuesday night, I'm oh. like, what the fuck is the matter with you, man? He's got a leather fucking band around his leg. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude, can you not fucking queer it up this hard? <laughs> All right. Awesome. Some of us are trying to be fucking outwardly straight. You fucking dickhead. What's the matter with you? You know? <laughs> you so, selfish son so yeah, of a yeah, 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 yeah. How dare you be who you want to be? Some of us are fucking hiding. Okay? What's the matter with you? Living free. <laughs> So, dude, I swear to God, we're at this bar and already I see him and he's like a homing beacon for like, I'm gay. And so I'm like, okay, let's, all right. I'm like looking around. I'm nervous already. And then all of a sudden walks in the fucking leader of the kickball league with like a team we just played, a bunch of people I know. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, what's more embarrassing <laughs> that I'm gay or that I'm on an adult kickball, kickball league? It's like, I don't want the gay guy to see that I know these kickballers. I don't want the kickballers to see that I'm with a gay guy. And I'm like, we got to get out of here. You know? <laughs> so we rented a pay by the hour motel in fucking Times Square banged each other <laughs> okay oh let's go back to my question so that's one time i almost got caught uh, if they ever pop up again feel free to share <laughs> At what point, and may, maybe you haven't 100% yet, I don't even know. What mm -hmm. point do you allow yourself to at least say, hey, I, I'm okay with this? En enough that, that you've been public. Around, oh, okay. you know, yeah, like, when around you, when I turned like 30, like nine years ago, I'd say maybe like, uh, what, 2015 or so? What was that shift for you? I mean, dude, I, I honestly thought this was a part of my life I was going to take to the grave. You did? Oh, yeah. And it was eating me up so much inside. And, and also, dude... In tandem with this like thing I have in my personal life, I'm a stand up and I'm trying to grow on stage. And and dude, honestly, like stand up's the reason why I started being open about this because I realized on stage I was just talking about bullshit. I'm like, I'm lying on stage. I'm not being authentically who I really am. And what the fuck is the point of this if we're not going to live authentically? And all I want to do in life is be a great stand-up. And the only way to do that is to live truthfully for better or worse. And so I had to come to terms with this and be like, dude, I think I, I just got to fucking, I, I got to get this out of me. I can't be secret guy, you know? I mean, obviously I have boundaries and things I keep to myself, but this is like a huge part of my fucking life that was like eating me up, you know? So can I ask you this? Why did why was it not enough for you to just come out to family and friends? Why do you feel like you needed to go even further with it? Because I I'm not a comic that can just talk about observational stuff. I I very much talk about myself, my life, how I see Got things, yep. things that happen to me, things I do. This is a big part of me. So being your authentic self and so everywhere. I, yeah. In in order to authentically- I think if you worked at um, you know, uh, an office job, would you be outwardly gay at the job? No, because it's nobody's business. But my my comedy, my stand-up is me. It's I mean, it's I know you'd life. be doing it in the break room, but nobody outwardly oh, would Yeah, be. <laughs> I'd be fucking, you know, trying to suck people off at the water jug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see the game this weekend, Bill? Um, but uh, I, so about ten years ago, you decide to really just start talking about it. And yeah, well, I you know I was in therapy, and it was just like getting to the point where like I I just had to you know come clean and and dude, it's so funny, man. I I took my my friend aside, and we went to this burger joint, and and I was about to tell him, you know, and, and it's such a funny thing. Because tell him what, or you know what I mean? That I've been with men. Because because you take a step back, and you're like, so okay. like, why do I have to? Because see, being like bisexuals, like, 
if you're like gay, it's like, oh, this is my lifestyle I see and who I'm I'm sure. going to be with men now for the rest of my life. But bisexual but I've is only basically known Ian like is with women only yeah, up yeah. until now. Yeah, and but then bisexual is like, hey, um, you know, you know how like you met my ex girlfriend. I'm still gonna date women, but you got to know that sometimes I like, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> and it's like, I, cool. Why are you telling me this? And I'm like, because I feel like I'm going to die if I don't let it out, you know. Okay. But I told I told my buddy we go to this burger joint, and uh, it's like one <laughs> turn of these, the hat one around, of these, bro. Yeah. I love that it's not a hot dog one, joint. One of these. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, <laughs> fucking jerk off. And and so we we go to this burger joint. And there's like stuff on the walls, and there's like a clown in the corner, and there's like you know it's like a kitschy type place, right? And um. I go, uh, can I, I stop you for one second? Yeah. Why him? Is this like a brother to you? Like, did you choose this? He was, person? he was my sponsor in AA okay. at the time, okay. who was also a friend. Got it. And, uh, we're talking. And I go, look, man, like, I, I, I gotta tell you something. I gotta, oh, God. And he's like, what, what, what are you like? Did you get fucked up? Like, did you break your surprise? I go, no. I, I, um, my, basically, my whole life, I've, I've like been secretly with guys. And right when I said that, the clown in the corner <laughs> went, <"Hello!" laughs> and we just started dying laughing, dude. It was the it was like a sign from God that was like, dude, it's okay. Who gives a Let's shit? fucking laugh, man. It's all right, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. And and dude, I, I went home and like told my mom, and dude, my mom started crying, and she was like, I always knew there was a sadness behind your eyes oh but she didn't know huh? she didn't know she had no clue but she always knew there was like a pain i had and um you know just like i i, I never i never want to live a lie i never want to lie i'll be honest to a fault and living authentically and being honest and open about things in my life my my failures and my faults and these things and the other. I mean, like, th there is a line of, like, you know, like, am I exploiting this or am I just being honest? But at the end of the day, like, I just operate better when I have, like, nothing to hide, better or worse, you know? And I've I've just felt I, – I really feel like the older I get, the more I'm becoming who I was always meant to be, which is that silly, fun kid that – was laughing and and having a good time and and full of love and and happiness and was ornery before you know his his friend made him bite on his penis <laughs> <laughs> because that's what brother this does. is what his brother liked <laughs> thank god i was an only child <laughs> I mean, my god. <laughs> what's going on uh, you're <laughs> out Woo! Okay, but, so let me ask you this then. When's yeah. the first time you date or have sex or whatever with a man where you're now like, okay. And and what well, was it here's, like? Here's the thing, man. I've tried to like, that. that's the thing that fucks me up too with like the identity and what am I and this and that. Because it's like, yo, I physically, I, I've been with men. But I've not like every girlfriend I have, I'm like, I think I love her. I let's what if uh, blah. and they're like, no, you're just a friend. I'm like, okay, we could just be friends. But I did, you know, you're hot, blah, 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 you know. But a guy friend, I've never ever been attracted to. I've never been at a sleepover and been like, Justin, what if we slept in the sleeping bag together? <laughs> you know, it's never been that. I've never like been hanging out with my bros and been like guys what are we doing <laughs> what are we just oh, doing we <laughs> you know like and, and that's the thing that's like yo I, I think like and and honestly <laughs> come on guys what are we let's doing just, let's just do it right? <laughs> yeah. so so then would you say it's but, fair to say, for lack of a better term, uh, sexual experience with a man is just scratching an itch? Yeah. There's no feelings and you've Bro. never fallen and fallen for a guy or it's and, that's And not I've tried to have a guy, like I've had sleepovers and I've like made them breakfast in the morning or I've gone on dates and it's just, I'm like. <sighs> you have gone on dates. Yeah. 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 And but never, nothing's ever been like, yeah. 
I just don't feel. But you said you've always been attracted to trans. What about a trans person? Oh, I've dated trans women. That I go on doesn't dates do it for trans you either. Women. No, no, I like that. Oh, okay. I'm attracted to feminine. Even the guys I go for are like feminine. Just not as know? feminine as the one that showed up in Times Square. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but also, too, like when people hear like, oh, you've been with men, they're like, ew, how do you like sweaty man ass? I'm like, I don't. It's disgusting. I like a shaved little dolphin man's ass like a, a like an effeminate dancer that's interesting too <laughs> you, you know? don't like all there's what yeah what does it for you okay and and it's funny because are my you an guy ass friends, man on both male no, female I, no i don't like guys asses at all that's the thing that's the thing that i'm like yo what the fuck and, and so half what the time, do you like half the time i'm sucking a cock i'm like what am i even doing <laughs> here what am i even doing what here? the f boy Can't did this stop. turn out the way i didn't expect <laughs> You know when something looks good on the menu <laughs> and you order it and then you're like, I can't eat this. This is, a is lot. what am I doing? It's like that. You know? You yeah. make me sick. I'm gonna get sick. <laughs> How do you think I feel? <laughs> I mean, dude, honestly, I think I'm just like criminally horny. <laughs> And I, I have realized that, that, you know, like I'm an alcoholic, I'm, not, I'm, I'm an addict and, and I'm sober from that. But I do think that oh, I do have uh, sex addiction in a way. And I, you know, if I, if I, if it doesn't work out with a, with a girl or whatever, I, I'm on the apps. Like maybe I'm just, I, get, I just want affirmation and someone to like, like me and want me. And then guys are super fucking easy to get. I'll bet. You know, so if after a thing doesn't work out with a lady, it's a reset with a guy usually. And in, then in the past, but I, I've gotten, I've, I've really done like a lot of work and like different programs and therapy of like kind of try to recognize this and realize this and kind of be like, I think guys are like my Bowie phase. You know, you like, think it's a phase? No, I, I mean that's a joke. It's, it's not a phase. But you know, even like sex with, with women, like I, 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 I love women i love um you know just like being held and holding and you know and, and that's exactly what a closeted gay man would be saying <laughs> you know? i love when you hold them and you kiss them i love women oh don't you like it when they get all gooey wooey down there gooey. woo but uh no i i don't know i i i i think like i have used men in the past, as you said, of scratching an itch or a way to get outside myself, a way for distraction. And I, I've I've used sex in that way across the board. And and I've really been trying to work on not being that guy anymore. You know, like I, ultimately, like I I want love. I want I to say, be do loved. You want a relationship? And I want to love. I don't know if I want a relationship because I'm pretty selfish with my time, and I don't want to put someone through my selfishness of my inability to donate my time in a way that sacrifices the things I want to do, you know? And so I don't know if I'm ready for a relationship, but, you know, I, 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 I would love to settle down, you know? And, and I've thought like, could I be with a guy? Like in, in my head, dude, my, my childhood best friend, he just came on the road with me. It was so fucking fun. We're having a blast. And, and I said to him, I go, man, it is a shame you are physically repulsive to me because this could be great. And and dude, when when I told him. This could be got, great. He got, when, when I told him about everything, I'll never forget. He goes, look, man, I love you no matter what. You know, you're always going to be my best friend. But have you ever thought about fucking me? And I go. No, dude, you're fucking disgusting me. And he goes, well, what the fuck, man? Really? Why not? <laughs> and I'm like, Hurt oh, so feeling. you want me to, yeah. you know? Like, my guy friends have been like, so you never suck my dick. What's so bad about me? And I'm like, well, you have cystic acne. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> so you always kept it outside your circle. Yeah. Okay. And, and and also, too, like, I would never want to cross that boundary. Like like with my girlfriends. I have a ton of girlfriends and I don't cross that boundary. I would never want to make someone feel as if I'm like with their friendship for like a different reason. I've never been like hanging out with my friends and been like, what if we, you know, I'm like not that kind of guy, which again makes me go, if I was really like 
gay, then I would be, wouldn't I be attracted to like my best friend that I, cause in every relationship with a girl, I'm like, God, I, it'd be so great to like marry my best friend, but it's always skews female. It's never be great to marry Bill, <laughs> you know, yeah. even though he's a doctor and he'd take care of me. Go ahead. Sorry, I take went somewhere it, take else. It. Take it <laughs> no, for a no, moment. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What? Um, let me ask you this: When you told your dad, how was that? I never did. You never told your dad? No, no. I was eight when he died. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, no wonder you never told him. I didn't yeah. realize you were that young. Yeah. What about no the? Well, now you're out. What about any of the uncles or anything? Anybody hit you up now? Well, the the uncle that told me to look how disgusting the guys mm -hmm. were when they kissed. He blew his head off a couple years ago. So. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What can I say? Me and him both like different types of head. <laughs> Blowing different types <laughs> yeah, of head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this one's for you, Danny. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, the other... And Holy my my dad's God. side of the family is totally cool with it. They're they're totally down. They love me. They support it. We make jokes. They're the fucking best, man. My dad's side of the family is fantastic. My mom's side of the family, we don't talk to them anymore. Um, but uh, you know, it's like I it 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 does bother me because I I some people try to get slick with me about it, and I've had to like what do you mean by that? Just like comments. And and I've had to, in, fa in the family. No, no, no. Uh, well, well, one one cousin. Um, I can't go to family functions anymore because I told go. him when I see him, it's on site. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Tony, if you're watching, I still haven't forgotten. So <laughs> see you Christmas. Yeah, it's gonna Fuck suck. I'm gonna have Tony. to knock you out in front of your kid with <laughs> behavioral issues. I wonder why, because you're a piece of shit. Anyway, uh, no, but like some comics, like. Cause, cause I started talking about this on stage. I didn't tell anyone. I just started being like, yeah, I suck dick or like I, you know, this and that. And they'd be like, dude, is that true? Or like, I'd go back in the green room and a group of them would be like, dude, we didn't know you were. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not. If you say it again, I'll show you who the is. And I've had to grip a couple people up because they talk slick and, and I get it. I understand because it is a comedic setting and it is jokes and some people don't know where the line is. And I'm a very jokey, roasty guy, but I've definitely, and it's helped me like put up boundaries to be like, yo man, you wouldn't, if a, if a female comic was on stage talking about sucking dick, you wouldn't go to them and be like, oh, you're going to suck a dick later tonight. I got a dick. You want to suck it? But like somehow it's okay to say to me, fuck you. Well, you know, I'm joking. I go, well, I, I don't like those kind of jokes. I love jokes about everything, but this is something I, I don't want to joke about. Now, do you ever have that in your personal life where you've mm -hmm. had to defend whatever by saying that, you know? I mean, dude, people, It. I mean, dude, with the trans thing, it's, it's very much like, um, you know, getting told I'm gay all the time because I – date trans women and it's like you're gay for caring <laughs> like what are you talking about <laughs> i'm making a woman come you fucking queer <laughs> are you worrying about me and this chick fuck you <laughs> it's like what's gayer me and her fucking living our lives or, or are you, you being a fucking on my YouTube yeah you about, caring about yeah, me yeah you know, it's a great point. That's a great point. But like, yeah, I've, but it's made me tougher. It's made me more understanding and empathetic. And, you know, like, I know I'm not the only one out there. I ain't the only guy that this has happened to. I ain't the only guy that has these feelings. No. I'm not the only guy. Who Jim Norton's been here. I mean, dude, that. Jim walked. So I, he crawled so I could walk yeah, and real. I walked so DeRosa could run, <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> the holy trinity yeah yeah father son the holy spirit <laughs> you know oh dude that's a that's a great way to end this episode ian finance thank you so much thank man. You, i friend. appreciate you you have no idea thank ah, you thank for your you. honesty thank you for making it fun and funny i know it it wasn't growing up and dealing with it and everything but 
Uh, and I also love that you're old school and you had to go to a library to see if you were fucked up. You didn't go. <laughs> you couldn't go. I know. You I know. Go. You had in to get fifth grade, off. looking up the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> the amount of work that had to go to <laughs> oh, get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Figuring out a Xerox, looking up newspaper articles yeah. on the Rolodex thing. Yeah. God forbid you, know? you leave it open all Lying that. Lying about right? homework <laughs> that you were never given. It's a science <laughs> to study. Yeah. Just drop me yeah, off. Yeah. 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 Um, thank Sobbing you. all over textbooks. <laughs> <laughs> Plug everything again. Your special, all yes. of it, please. Ian Finance, wild, happy, and free. YouTube.com slash B and Ian Pod. It's I'm the I work so hard. I'm so proud of it. And uh I really hope it resonates with people and they dig it. And uh you can see me on the road everywhere, Ianfidance.com for all my dates. I animal69 on Instagram and uh B and Ian with Jordan every Wednesday on YouTube, patreon.com slash B and Ian Pod. Awesome. Thank thank you for being here for real. Yeah, this man. Great. Thank You're you. always a good time. Thank man. you, brother. As always, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Come see me on tour. All tickets available at ryansickler.com. We'll talk to y'all next week. Mm-hmm.